behind as the target swing. If, uh, if only half the mud ball sticks to the target, and the other half bounces back towards the boy from the target. With a speed of two meters per second, how fast will the target move immediately after it hit? After it's hit. All right, the plot thickens. <laughs> okay, so now this is um, a partially silty. Now it's partially elastic and partially inelastic. Yeah, I don't know what the, uh, actually I haven't seen a problem like this before where there's partial sticking and partial non-sticking, so I don't, but I guess it would be good to, to say that we might call it partially inelastic. Mm -hmm. well, what, what, what did you say it was? Partially elastic and partially inelastic? I'm not sure, what, what turn? Yeah, um, well because the part where the mud ball sticks mm -hmm. is an inelastic, completely inelastic, but then the part where it falls off. Elastic. Yeah, those actually, I guess those terms are not are probably not um, best to uh, to use here. So we we want to say that totally inelastic means the two objects stick together, and I don't think we have any special term for uh, when it's only partially sticking. Elastic means that kinetic energy is conserved, and that doesn't happen just because they're not sticking together. So we can't assume that, there, there's, that the collision is elastic at all. We can't assume that we're going to be using the term elastic. In fact, we know it's not elastic because there is some sticking. Okay. So um, probably uh, not to worry about, best not to worry about the terminology, just focus on what's happening. Part, part is sticking and part is not. Okay. And part is moving right. in the negative x direction. Right. Seems that's a good start. And the only thing I forgot to do is that the, the final momentum of the, the half of the number ball that falls off is negative, not positive. Ah. Does that work to, to use momentum equation that way? Yeah, it sounds like you're doing good. Okay. Okay, so again, momentum is going to be conserved. Uh, the initial mass of the mud ball was two kilograms, and its initial velocity 
was, well, right before the collision, we knew that it was going at positive 10 meters per second. And initially, the target had no momentum because it was at rest. And then afterwards, we have the momentum of a half of the mud ball. Uh, well, half of that mass is one kilogram. And they told us that it was moving back at two meters. And here's where people would be most likely to make a mistake, but you correctly put in a negative sign here uh, to show that that was moving in the leftward direction. And then the new combined mass is the mass of the target, which is three kilograms, and half the mud ball is one kilogram. That gives us four kilograms overall. And then the mass of the mud ball target combo is what we're trying to figure out. So we have 20 plus negative two plus four V. What did you get as your answer? Uh, 22 four meters per second. Or 11 halves. Did that come out positive or negative? Positive. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. we know they should be moving to the right. So the velocity of the mud ball target combo now would be 5.5 meters per second, 22 fourths. Um, so that goes in five and a half. Good. Now, what was the velocity when the entire thing stuck? Um, it was four meters per second. Yeah, first of all, you might, I think it would make sense to go faster when there's less weight. Yeah, I do. But let's think in terms of conservation of momentum. The initial momentum was to the right. Yeah, initially the target wasn't moving and the mud ball was moving to the right. So we have to end up with a rightward momentum. We have to end up with a rightward momentum. Um, well, when all of it was sticking to the target, all the mud ball was sticking to the target, then it was easy to, to have a rightward momentum. But now we're going to have a leftward momentum from this portion. And since there's a leftward momentum from this portion, the stuff that's moving to the right has to be moving more to the right, so that overall the net momentum is still to the right, um, because the net momentum initially was to the I right. I guess I was, I was not thinking about the actual situation where like, the force with which it's hitting it is the same because it's the same, the mass of the mud ball is the same at the point of contact. So I was mm -hmm. just thinking about if a lighter thing hits a heavier thing, then it wouldn't go as far but it's the same, do you know what I mean? It was nah, maybe I know what you mean. So, <laughs> guess, the, I, yeah, so the key point here is it's true that um, something lighter is going to be hitting this, but that's a double-edged sword. That also makes it easier for it to move. So. Right, and I guess what I was thinking is that something lighter was going to be hitting it, but it's the same mass of mud that's hitting it. It's just... That's a better explanation than I was giving. That's off. right. So that's actually a better explanation. That. So what's actually happening here is you can use Newton's third law. The target here has to do something to the mud ball. Well, first of all, it has to bring some of the, it has to slow down some of the half of the mud ball so that it doesn't go straight through it. But it also has to push even harder to reverse some of the mud ball. Um, it's actually pushing even harder to the left to reverse some of the mud ball. Well, because it's having to push very hard to the left to reverse the mud ball, by Newton's third law, the mud ball is, exert is pushing hard to the right. Uh, so it ends up moving faster than it was before. Well, um, so that didn't seem to give you any trouble. You got in this negative sign here. Again, it was conservation of momentum because it was a brief collision. And again, notice it, it's actually not useful to try to articulate is this totally inelastic or partially inelastic. The one thing you wouldn't want to say is it's not an elastic collision. Mm -hmm. Elastic collisions mean we have conservation of energy. Well, since there's some sticking going on here, there's no conservation of energy. If there was conservation of energy, we would be using initial kinetic energy equals final kinetic energy. Well, you can't do that unless the problem specifically tells you that. So the safest thing is not to worry about the terminology, but just to still just use the conservation of momentum equation. Okay. All right.